To hear the cicadas sing, you need to be patient. Welcome, please come in. Good evening, sir. At the entrance, without reservation, impossible to know waiting time. We'll find solutions, we don't know how yet. We'll tell stories if it takes a little longer. A smile, a kind word. There are only six of you, my God. We're going to feed you for seven anyway, you'll see. Have a great time and bon appétit. Frédéric Desfontaines is the manager of this Nantes Brasserie. He's been working there for 32 years. It's one of the most beautiful and one of the largest in France. Four rooms, around 100 tables, for over 800 covers a day. A thousand at peak times. Good evening, good evening. Are you being looked after? Yes, but I hope for your sake too, otherwise it's going to be complicated. If you want dinner, we won't take care of you. Yes, it opens up very quickly. I don't refuse anyone, but what's the idea of refusing? What does it mean to refuse? Because as long as we're able to welcome everyone and people make the effort to come and see us, we absolutely have to keep them. You can settle in now and I wish you a very pleasant evening. Young people, women who have come to dine with friends. Evening, couples, families celebrating birthdays. But above all, lots of tourists. They all want to sit at the table of this establishment, listed as a historic monument. Art Nouveau decor with romantic paintings, ceramics and mirrors. People also come here to eat classic and generous. Andouillette, escargot or the famous tartare au couteau. Let's go live for a Saint-Jacques and an Anglet à Poing. Dishes concocted by a brigade of 18 cooks who take turns from 7.30 to 2 a.m. We send out a fried andouillette, freeze beef juice and cod. Located in the heart of Old Nantes, the brasserie is awakened every morning by the ballet of deliveries. Feeling good? I'm fine. Come on, Abdallah. Let's dispatch your merchandise. Antoine Doré, the chef. Watch out behind you. Juggling a dizzying shopping list. What's going on, Abdallah? Here, let's put it down. 11 kilos of beef fillets for the tartar. 30 kilos. 10 kilos of anglet. Just for this weekend, 150 kilos of meat, 100 kilos of fish, and 150 kilos of shellfish and seafood. Shells, three. Over 10,000 euros worth of goods, all fresh produce, ordered from the Nantes market and local producers. There's a bit of volume though. We're preparing for the weekend, so we need merchandise. But we know that on Monday, there'll be nothing left. Monday, that, there'll be nothing left. That's it, that's a certainty. I'll be back on Monday. There's a piece of pike perch missing here. Yes, 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 I took 28, you send me 20. Eight kilos of fish missing from his order. That's about 30 plates. At the end of the line. His supplier? The chef is not worried. His restaurant is one of the biggest buyers in town. You're missing out. Do you have the complimentary eight? Antoine will be delivered within the hour. If I have 30 portions less, it won't work. Especially as I've got groups booked for this weekend. They've already reserved their menu for this weekend. They're coming Sunday night, they want pike perch. And if I can't offer them pike perch, that's a problem. To avoid missing a food from the menu, Antoine has two suppliers for most of his products. Another headache is storing all his merchandise. The building's layout was designed at the end of the 19th century, not very functional for a modern brasserie. It's a bit narrow, yes. Very small fridges on three different floors. And no freezers. The building's status as a historic monument prevents any expansion. We have to work intelligently. In other words, can you see the space? Uh, 
you absolutely have to optimize volume. If you don't, you won't make it. That's why we put everything in crates. We stack them neatly, category by category. That's what's important. An old lady full of constraints that needs to be pampered to make it last over time. We don't push the ladder everywhere because it's fragile. It's no joke. This is the job of Charles Poilain, the house electrician. The slightest intervention requires precision and meticulousness. Like every month, he has to change all 80 bulbs in the restaurant, even the ones that still work. The room stays lit 20 hours a day. Is it hot up there? His aging electrical system burns out bulb after bulb. Despite these constraints, Charles wouldn't give his place to anyone. There are constant worries here, but it's so pleasant, it's so good. Because we have to rack our brains every time to find the solution. We've got something in our hands. We've got a heritage that we can't afford to neglect. Here we are, another one done. It all began in 1895, when three people from Nantes took up the challenge of transforming an old fabric store into a brasserie. The place quickly became a meeting place for the city's wealthy gentlemen, who came to eat, talk business, but above all, to be entertained on the arms of women of little virtue, nicknamed the cicadas. This traditional brasserie fell into decline in the 60s, transformed into a self-service, then into a games room with pinball and bowling. It's a bowling alley that used to be around here. You know there used to be a bowling alley here? When Yannick Curti bought the place in 82, it was on the verge of bankruptcy. He was 29, worked in asset management, and knew nothing about the restaurant business. He has just one idea, to revive the 19th century concept. Turn it into a brasserie, extend the range of services. The staff were dressed like they were at the turn of the century. The products were homemade, and all this meant that I quickly realized that after a few months, La Cicada was once again an institution. La Cigale is singing again and attracting the world's greats. Jacques Chirac, Lionel Jospin, Emmanuel Macron. Thank you very much for your warm welcome and your dinner. We'll be back again in a very friendly way. Here we are on our friend Jean Dujardin with Alexandre Lamy, whom I had mistaken for Albert Dupontel one morning when I was in great shape. Bravo. Depardieu, he started with the drinks, tasting the muscadet, then he tasted snails. And he was in the kitchen, and this is a customer's dish. He said, I'm going to taste it, I'm going to taste the snails. He started eating the customer's snails who waited for their meal. An institution, open 365 days a year, which employs 50 people. Okay. Estelle James is the floor manager. Today she'll be working 10 hours straight, perched on her heels. I feel better, I think it's classier, and I look taller, too. I think it's better. And for the customer? I think it's nicer, too. A woman in heels is always good. The cicada pin. Only hall managers have that one. I waited for him, and I got him. At the age of 28, Estelle is the first woman to hold this position since the brasserie opened. She climbed the ladder very quickly. After her apprenticeship, she came here as a waitress. Three years later, she's running three services a day. Breakfast, lunch and tea room. She has ten people under her command. Exactly. I'm here, I'm safe, it suits me fine. Basile, please tuck in your shirt. And she knows how to make herself respected. Basile, please tuck in your shirt. Thank you, Basile, so come on. Can you imagine all the waiters with their shirts tangled all over the place? Crooked collars, crooked bow ties, 
We have to be clean. Everyone has to be clean. So for six people, gentlemen, ladies, please, right this way. It's noon. All customers arrive at the same time. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Estelle has to seat them and fill her room as quickly as possible. Good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Just to make sure to do two or even three services in three hours. I'll be available from two o'clock onwards if you like, madame. Right now, yes. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. A Saturday, madame. There, it's all black there. There's one table left. There we are. How's that? It's great. That's what I wanted from the start. I've got a bit of a kick here. Yes, I'll give you still water, sparkling water in a carafe. Well, that's perfect. Thank you very much. 130 people have already ordered. In the kitchen, one order follows another. Hello live, two King Sea Breams. Hello live, one pan fried foie gras. Two chuck steaks to follow. Hello, next, a round trip, we oui, chef. Like Estelle, Antoine, 36 years old, started at the lowest position in this kitchen before becoming chef at the age of 30. Every shift, over 400 plates. In a building ill-suited to such a pace, his kitchen is spread over three floors. Here, in the basement, five square meters for vegetable and fish preparation, so it's plunged in generously. On the second floor, the patisserie, where over 500 cakes, all homemade, are baked every day. And on the first floor, Antoine is confined to a 10 square meter space, from which he can only manage the hot dishes. Two scallops on top. The pass-through prevents him from accessing the appetizer station opposite him. I don't have a visual on the liver. There's no way I can see if the foie gras slice is too big, if the sea bream tartar is badly seasoned. I don't have the time, I can't do it. I can't. It's impossible. In the interests of speed, the presentation is minimalist. A star product, a side dish, a sauce. No frills. Antoine has succeeded in adapting to the location. The only thing he can't control, his customers' desires. On this particular day, everyone wanted sea bream. And in barely an hour... Attention to the room where yellow pollock, the door aid runs out. The chef has to replace it with another fish at an equivalent price. 17 euros for the dish problem. Orders for Dorade have already been taken in the dining room. Go and see your customers. If they don't like it, come back to me and we'll see together. Immediate time. If there's any problem, I'll substitute a more expensive fish. Yes, that's fine with the customer. No worries? Okay, see you later. Okay, one Pollock, Stefan. We'll send two yellow Pollocks. Madame, please go ahead. Inside? For how many people? Estelle also has a little problem to deal with. Her management is asking her to find a table at all costs. For a notary who wants to eat immediately with his wife. There are no more tables. Ah oh, well, when you want to make a crowd, eh? No more chairs. Five minutes later, the notary arrives. Exactly, I spoke to him on the phone. We always have a solution, me, we always have to. Exactly, exactly. Here, regulars are pampered. For Maddie and her friend Francoise, here with her daughter today, it's always table 206. Thank you very much, Maddie. In the great hall next to the bar. We've prepared a little amuse bouche for you. Medium rare. My husband says, you're going to your canteen, but this place deserves better than that trivial term. But it's true, I've got my habits. I come here on every occasion, under every pretext, I create them. So, for girls' lunches, like this one, for birthdays, for the end of the year, 
I come here whenever I don't know where else to go, to be welcomed and to feel at home. A girl's lunch with a aperitif, dishes and desserts, a bill of 30 euros per person. It's just the way we like it. There's no problem. On average, each customer here spends 40 euros. Guys, we all go to the pantry. Suddenly, Estelle interrupts the service. We're going to sing right away and do the sets later. There's an anniversary to celebrate. A ritual for Clara's family. Today she celebrates her 23rd birthday. Every year and for all three, ever since, since he was 12 or 13, he's 24 now. We do it because we like it here. And it's symbolic and a ritual now, so we like it. If customers are satisfied with the service and her room is full every day, Estelle receives a monthly bonus of 100 euros on top of her salary of 2,300 euros net. Alex, gift to this table. I don't tip, it's for the rows. For row leaders, to each his own. Not us, we're being punished. Here, unlike many restaurants, there's no communal tip jar. Each waiter has his own reward to motivate him. Some can earn up to an extra 500 euros a month. It's 7.30. Hand over to the evening team. Good evening. Thank you very much. And good luck tonight. Estelle will finally be able to leave her heels. With Kevin, the other hall manager, mileage contest. How many did you do? I made 13. I'm disgusted. It's because I was in heels, that's why. There are 22 milestones. You've gone 10 miles further than me. I'm dead, clearly. No, I really don't. When you're in it, it's... It's okay. It's really when you let go that everything falls back. There's... We don't exist anymore. We can't do anything at all. A machine that exhausts bodies and never stops. At dawn the next morning, Antoine, the chef, goes shopping. In addition to his typical brasserie menu, with its 20 or so dishes, he proposes two new recipes for each meal. One meat, one fish. For inspiration, he goes to the Nantes wholesale market. Local Rangis. For his meat, Antoine sets his sights on a filet mignon of Auvergne pig. It's raised in Cantal, a small family home. Elevated from 700 meters. See the fat there? The more fat, the softer the meat, the better the taste. There's no contest. It's a craft. Ah, it's a craft. Well, it's just been carved. I'm going to cook it in two hours. We'll sell it in three hours. And the customer can eat it for lunch. And that's it, that's the beauty of it. For his fish, squid. The Marais-Leu has set aside the best catch of the day. Antoine has priority over most of the city's restaurants. They gave you the best ones. Uh, in terms of sales volume, they're one of our biggest customers. If you're not a cicada, you're not doing it. Bringing out two new dishes every day, a constraint Antoine imposes on himself. If we made beef filet en douillette and then fish all year round, it would be extremely boring, it would be extremely routine. But that's not how I see cooking and that's not how I see the job of a chef. Daily specials that waiters will be encouraged to sell first. At lunchtime, 
So, Chef, today, tell us a little about what you've got on the menu. So, this lunchtime, we'll have a meat suggestion for 22 euros, a filet mignon de cochon laborie, and also a persilade of squid. We're also guiding sales a little, which means that the chef has market opportunities. We try to support his sales approach. Sold for 16 euros. A squid persilade with potato puree shouldn't cost Antoine more than 4 euros in raw materials. To maintain this margin, no more than 100 grams of squid per plate. Except that his party boss is a bit heavy-handed. There, that's enough. That's not bad. Do a little less for the fish. A little generous. You can push the mashed potatoes just a little. Really, just to stay. Hello, live. Four squid persolades. How much? How many squid? I told you it would work. No, but it's... Voila. We're on ready-made products. Squid is a favorite. In parsley, it's delicious. That's what we want. Okay, we'll send four squid. Thank you for this. I don't eat it much, and this was the occasion, and it's very good. I would have spiced it up a bit more, but it was very good. And the plate is nicely presented. Cour Ferrière. After an hour, Antoine is out of stock. Everything has an end. I'm not a magician. I can't have 10 kilos. On the other hand, if I had 10 kilos of squid and I didn't sell any at all, I'd be the one forced to sell the stuff I wouldn't have sold at lunchtime. That's what's going to happen to his filet mignon. It's a flop, only one plate sold. It will be offered again for dinner service. A service that gets off to a bad start for Frederick, the manager. A window fell and shattered on the table of a couple of customers. A recurring problem on stormy evenings. Where to put the glass? The brewery has a spare stock. But the windows are too small. Attempting to repair them with the restaurant card. This is a different business. We have to adapt. We'll go to plan B. Can you hold it for me? You can settle in now. If it gets uncomfortable, we'll find another solution. I'm sorry again. Not at the moment, no. We're fully booked. We're going to have to find someone fast who can step in tomorrow morning. I think we can do without the charm, but that's part of it. A charm some people are willing to travel hundreds of miles for. It's very good. Such is the case for Blas, Maria and their three children. They arrive from Murcilla in southern Spain. They first came to this brewery nine years ago. My baby? And literally fell in love with the place. This one is top notch. We always told our son, if you win a prize at school, we'll take you to celebrate it here at La Cigal. He has just been named valedictorian. We arrived today, we're leaving tomorrow morning for these extraordinary customers. A little gift on the house. Here you go, the La Cigal book. Thank you very much for this and congratulations to you. Especially because tonight they're going to go wild. Aperitif, starter, dessert. Two royal platters, 149 euros each. And a bottle of champagne. A bill of 680 euros for France. And long live the Marseillaise, the most beautiful of the evening. It's nice. And a big tip for Tristan. How much then? 10 pounds is 15 euros. That's 25 euros. That's a nice way to end the evening. You can take it all the way. 1 a.m. time to count. The brasserie served over 800 people. 
for 40,000 euros in sales. We catered for the equivalent of a small town. In barely five hours, the cicada will awaken. For another round of the field, 